1983 most certainly was the year of the new excitement for the state of Michigan. Of the 12 United States Football League teams, the Panthers flew highest of all. And for Panther fans everywhere, the excitement is back again. Welcome to the Michigan Panther cast. I'm Ryan. I am a lifelong fan of the Michigan Panthers since 1983 as a 10-year-old celebrating their inaugural usfl championship that's pete over there who doesn't have the same connection to the usfl but he is a a new fan as i'm kind of dragging him into this as he's we're part of the same limp ditka's football podcast as the michigan panther cast is a portion of that uh but he's also uh kind of an experiment (laughs) i'm i'm doing here (laughs) similar to what the usfl will be doing trying to get new fans into into the usfl that aren't necessarily invested the way i am but it's a, I think it's a good case study to see how to get Pete involved over there. Me, uh, USFL fan. <laughs> you picked uh, <laughs> part of that exercise is picking your favorite team randomly. You are a, a lifelong Chicago resident, and there's not really anything in the current USFL that ties you to a team. So you chose the, uh, Mich- uh, I'm sorry, the Pittsburgh, the Pittsburgh Maulers. Maulers. It's going to work out better uh, because I'm trying to manufacture a rivalry between both the Michigan Panthers and the Pittsburgh Maulers uh, simply because they're close in geography. Uh, I think every team needs a rival. Uh, They are the two largest social media followings uh, amongst the eight USFL teams. So I thought that that worked out perfectly. But on episode eight, uh, the previous episode of the Michigan Panther cast, I was whining about how there hadn't been much content for us to talk about. We're uh, whining. There was, there was no uh, date released yet when uh, uniforms or maybe a schedule would be released. And I believe while we were recording that last Wednesday night, maybe at the moment I was whining about it, the USFL announced on social media they would be showing all eight uniforms unveiling uh, last Thursday. And uh, it was a, a momentous day, to say the least. Um, they did it right. They had not had a huge social media presence uh, before that. And they knew what they were doing because they basically took over the entire day of last Thursday, uh, releasing a, a different team's uniform every hour on the hour with uh, really cool, well-produced videos and photography and stuff. Uh, and they gave brought out a schedule before, so literally every hour there was uh, a new, a new uniform being revealed in, in very cool fashion. Very fun, uh, especially for star, you know, content starved people like us. It couldn't have been couldn't have been better. So maybe I'll keep whining about stuff to to get my my requests answered by the USFL. But uh, subsequently, social media follows have gone through the roof for all teams and even this podcast, which I'll get to later is very much appreciated but it shows that the usfl is getting a footprint uh in pop culture maybe but certainly on social media after this but one thing about the about the usfl and a lot of my michigan panther love for all these 40 years now uh comes from the, their uniforms as i believe the michigan panthers have the best football uniform in in the history of football and uh whoa a lot of people are, enjoy football for parts of that, you know, for the, for the uniforms and the helmets because they look fucking cool. And if your team doesn't look cool, you might not be as interested in them. So it's a, it's an important thing. And the USFL got it, got it right, um, especially the, the way they unveiled everything. And I think we should go through and uh, I'll go through and rank my uniforms one to eight. Uh, you're not going to be surprised who number one is, but we'll, so we'll start at number eight. Um, you've got those in front of you there, don't you, Pete? I you do. See what I'm... I well, do. Unfortunately for you, and you might bristle at this, but I'm going to make the Pittsburgh Maulers number eight on my list. Wow, that's that's. I, I feel like I have. They're not the best uniform, but they have one of the most interesting uniforms compared yeah. to the boringness of a lot of the uniforms. And th- that's that's a good argument. I, I and I and I'm not going to argue <clears throat> with that. And you know <clears throat> these aesthetic arguments, you know. There's no right or wrong answer, but we'll just give our opinions at least. But I'm going to put uh, the Maulers. There are right answers, and yours is wrong. <laughs> we're going to we're going to put the Maulers at number eight because no, I you're going to put the Maulers at number eight. 
Well, this is my Michigan Panther cast. So when you start the Pittsburgh Mauler cast or your Mall Rats, whatever you want to call it, you, you can you can dominate that one as you please. But it's called it's going to be called the Blood Cast because we're going to maul the fucking USFL. <laughs> Believe it or not, I did not pick again. Pick them number eight uh, because of any angst towards them or uh-huh. you over there. Uh, uh-huh. I just I don't like them. I don't like how the purple and orange works. I don't like the, you know, the collar, like the the straight line across the oh, collar. I bones. love it. I see. I love that. I think it it's, is. It's, it's not. not. It's the only interesting uniform out of all of them. Well, the, you're, is you're, my you're, argument you're way off there, but. Your uniform uh, is as plain as Jane, so but no, go you're, ahead. You're way off there again, but uh because the orange and purple don't really work and that that strange cut across the top of the chest. I've never it, you're right, it is unique. Uh, I think it's unique cuz it doesn't look very good and no one else would do it, but mm. uh, they do it on both the home and the away, I believe. There's a either an orange top of the shoulder pad or a purple top of the shoulder pad maybe on the That is correct. uniform, so uh, the helmets are cool, though. I, I will definitely give you that. I, they're, mm. The helmets had not been unveiled. Uh, the helmets were revealed at the same time, so I guess that could be part of part of this conversation. Um, you, you had an idea based on history what they were going to look like. Purple helmets with the orange orange stripe, orange and white logo. Uh, you have white face masks. So, yeah, I don't have them right in front of me anymore. But Yes. Uh, no, Those no, are, that's blue. The face masks are blue. Or purple. I purple. Mean. purple and okay. orange with the orange I think, stripe. The face mask are? Wait, you're talking about the helmet or just the face mask itself? What color is the face mask is what I'm asking. It's white, uh, isn't it? It looks gray here. Uh, that would be kind of cool if it was that. I'm pretty sure it's white, but I should have had them here in front of me, but I'm going by memory. Mm, well, that uh, was in trouble. Well, this one won't piss you off too much because number seven, I'm going to make the, the Philadelphia Stars. Well, see, I would have put them eight because they look like they're fucking Ronald McDonald. That is the comment across all of social media is they, they are Ronald McDonald. Uh, very ketchup and mustard, bright yellow, bright red. Uh, I think if they had chosen different colors, those uniforms would be really cool because they have some cool striping down the side, uh, side of the jersey, I believe, and down the, the side of the pants. They have an interesting helmet stripe down the middle. Yeah, the, uh, but, the helmet stripe down the middle matches the pant, which is yeah, kind of cool. I think that is cool. It's just the the bright yellow and bright bright red just does not work. It's just it's obnoxious. And in fact, uh, the original stars back in the '80s they were gold, not yellow. So I don't. I'm not really sure why they switched from gold gold to yellow. They would have been better served, I think, if those were gold, like a metal flake gold. That would have looked pretty cool, but they chose not to. Uh, my basically my six through three are kind of kind of up in the air i i I could go in any order i'm sure you have some opinions about them but i kind of put them all in the same box they're a little bit boring but they're classic and and that's what i think the usfl has gotten right in a lot of ways um the they're a classic look there's not a lot of flashy new new age designs it's it's pretty standard striping on the on the shoulders or on the sleeves or down the side of the pants, uh, which I kind of like because this is a this is a league referencing a league that happened forty years ago. So, but they are updating it for for today. Um, I think I would put uh, maybe the Houston Gamblers at number six. I think those are are fairly cool, but they're just black and a dark gray pants um, with some red accents. They really remind me of the Atlanta Falcons uh, of the maybe the nineties Falcons uniforms. Um, I don't think they're bad. I, I think they're probably, you know, not in the they, top. They, they, top they are half. exactly like, kind of like the Atlanta Falcons. Yeah. I think next, maybe at number <clears throat> five, I would put uh, the, where should I go with this? I think I'll put the Birmingham stallions there. I, I actually like that look. Uh, it just reminds me a lot of the 49ers. There's not much difference between them and the 49ers uh, with the gold helmets and the, the red stripes, red, white accents. So wait, um, you're putting them at number five? I'll put them at, I'll put them at five. So then are you going to put your Panthers at six because the uniforms are exactly the same, just color scheme difference? Uh, you're way off, and I'll get to that when I get to number one, of course. Okay. When you but look go at the ahead. Helmet, Obviously, you've not seen the Panthers helmet, but we'll, I've we'll... seen the Panthers helmet, but it's about the uniform, the whole thing. So exactly, 
and that's what I'm talking about. So you were wrong about that, but we'll get to. I uh, thought there was no right or wrong here, Ryan. Number six was Houston. Number five was Birmingham. Uh, let's see. I think I'll go with. What do we have left? Tampa Bay. The you got bandits. You, you got the maxi pad left, also known as the New Orleans <laughs> the Breakers. Mass Gill ad. The Massengill <laughs> ad. Yes, New Orleans Breakers. I've got actually got them at number two. Uh, oh, I'm going to put the Tampa Bay Bandits at number four. I think those are really sharp, and you don't see silver and red in pro football too much. Silver, red, and black. Um, the only thing that that bugs me is they look like Ohio State uniforms, possibly. <laughs> Uh, a little too close to that is one of my least favorite college football teams, but I yeah. do think it's a sharp look. That is one thing I would say about the USFL. I'm glad you brought that up is that a lot of the uniforms are to me, remind me of college or high school uniforms. So, yeah, which I mean, college, they'll remind you of college uniforms mainly because co most college uniforms are pretty classic looking. They, you know, they'll change small details here and there, but usually college uniforms look fairly similar to what they have for, close to a hundred years. And I think that that's what USFL was going for. Um, I think they could have gotten more adventurous with their color schemes. Um, as like half the league is red. <laughs> uh, the other, the other problem with is half the league or two of the, two of the, two of the eight teams are horse logos, which is a bit too much. Um, beyond that. Um, yeah. I just didn't like how much red is in there. Was, there's no green teams. There's not many blue teams available. Um. Oh, New Jersey Generals. Ugh. They look just like the Chiefs to me. Uh, maybe a little bit better version of the Chiefs. I do like the Generals logo, the five stars that form another star with a kind of champion's wreath around it. Um, I don't think those are bad. Those, they're just kind of plain. Um, maybe I would put those that lower in that group of three to six. I think, like I said, I could I could rearrange those, but. I think the breakers have to be number two, um, even though it, their logo looks, as you mentioned, as like a feminine hygiene product, uh, maybe a Massengill or a Carefree or Playtex logo. It's either or that sort. or like a or, or or like a rehab counseling, one of the two. I mean, <laughs> Jesus, or I mean, some cult. The New Orleans breakers for those heavy days. <laughs> um, but the uniforms, I think, I think, yeah, are I, I, of all. I'm not going to argue with you. The uniforms, they, they may have fucked up with like the overall logo and name, but then when you see it on the uniform, you're kind of like, eh. Yeah. It's a, it's a striking look with it's what probably the number one uniform, but uh, and I, I've seen many people rank them number one. And I, and I probably would if I, if I wasn't a biased Panthers fan and if their Panthers helmet wasn't the best one I've ever seen, but uh, the breakers have, you know, bright, bright blue and icy light blue accents and white, white pants, white helmets, white face mask. The coolest thing they did was have the, the wave go wave part of the logo go wrap around the entire backside of the helmet. Uh, they had a similar look in the eighties, which I always thought looked bizarre. It, it never really looked like a wave to me, but the new one looks like a, cr a crashing cresting wave that I think is super cool. I think they did a really good job with, with the breakers. Um, so yeah, if I wasn't so biased, I would probably make them number one, but my number one Jersey, of course, and uniform and helmet combination is my Michigan Panthers. And I'm really excited about it. They, they made very few changes from the original. Uh, it's a very similar, uh, it's a, it's actually a double, double stripe on the, on the arms, uh, with, a with an outline around it, um, the colors they got very close to the original the royal plum champagne silver is a little bit off uh that, that's my main complaint with the with the new uniforms it is very gold at least in in the majority of the pictures i've seen and in the video footage that is supposed to be a very light gold but it is a very deep gold that that, that i'm seeing so far don't they have like a light orange pant for their away uniform no that is that's mango gold. maybe is that mango it's, I think it's, it's mango. supposed to be it's supposed to be champagne silver. That's a bad that's bad retouching in photography. It looks like mango to me, so that's Definitely a great not. look. Definitely yeah, not. uh huh. You're gonna have to get past that. But uh, it, that's my one complaint. That gold should be a lot a lot a little bit lighter to match the actual champagne silver. The coolest part is the accent is light blue, which just brings the whole thing together. Uh, they did uh, 
a version of their original helmet, which has always been the coolest helmet in, in all of professional football. I have a mini helmet uh, in my office here uh, with the Panther that kind of wraps around the, the lower half of the helmet. Uh, just look, it always looks super cool to me. They've changed. Of course we saw with the logo unveil a couple months ago that the, the Panther was not going to look quite the same. They've done a kind of a, a simplified modern version of that which i actually don't like quite as much and i've done my own that is the logo of this michigan panther cast that i think they would have been better off doing but overall they kept the same idea that it would be a a panther coming up from the bottom of the helmet wrapping up around in ferocious fan in ferocious fashion retaining much of the original look of the of the champion 1983 panthers uh so i i love it i'm i'm excited about it it is propelled help propel the Panthers to uh, insurmountable lead in social media followers now as they were, they were down uh, by about a thousand uh, back probably about three weeks ago and have surpassed the Pittsburgh Maulers and are now about 8,000, uh, maybe 10,000 if you combine all social media followers ahead of the, the Maulers now. So uh, there's a lot of, a lot of momentum behind my, my Panthers, the most popular team in the league. Um, a lot of that has to do with, uh, Jeff Fisher being the, probably the biggest name in, across the new USFL, most recognizable name, uh, at least that has got gained the, the team some momentum there as well. Well, Jeff Fisher and all of the other owners, uh, met, uh, got together over, over the last few weeks or last few days and had the inaugural uh usfl 2.0 draft oh, at hooters God. right <laughs> yeah it was in birmingham alabama um they did this was not televised it's not a big enough uh event to be televised but it was <laughs> no way it, it was extensively covered on social media and i followed it followed along uh most of tuesday evening and throughout the day today actually starting at 10 a.m as Ooh. round a two rounds 13 through 35 commence today but, of course, the Michigan Panthers had the number one pick uh, last night in the first round and went with Shane Patterson, quarterback formerly of the Michigan Wolverines, um, which was kind of a surprise to everybody. There, there, it was going to be a surprise to most anyway because there was not a full player pool announced. Nobody knew who they were going to be dra- what the pool of players they'd be drafting from was going to be. You could kind of put two and two together and assemble your own pool uh, to get an idea of, of who might be available, but no one really knew for sure until the, until the draft commenced. But there's a lot of speculation that a player named Jordan Tum- Tuamu, I believe is how you pronounce it. It's a interesting uh, interesting name with a hyphen in it or uh, with an apostrophe in it. I'm not sure. Tayamu, I believe, is how you pronounce it. But there's a lot of speculation that he would go number one to the Panther, Panthers as their quarterback. And he actually went number two. Uh, and so it makes me a little nervous. I'm not really sure where Jeff Fisher got the idea to draft Shane, Shane Patter, Shea Patterson from. Um, uh, the only thing I can think of immediately was that it was a local connection, of course. The Michigan Panthers drafting a Michigan Wolverine. Uh, might might work for for marketing purposes, but Patterson I thought was a mediocre quarterback at Michigan. He's kind of bounced around the a few teams in the NFL, but never really landed anywhere. Um, and that is most of who you've heard drafted uh, throughout these last two days in, in the USFL. Their player pool is essentially uh, players from you know big universities you've heard of, uh, players you probably haven't necessarily heard of though. These are players that may have spent a couple years uh, on a couple different teams in the NFL, uh, may have been on practice squads, uh, and may or may be looking for a little bit more secure income with a with a full professional league as opposed to being on a practice squad. But it's basically just players that can't quite make the NFL. That, right. That's, that's probably what I should have should have assumed. I mean, that was really the whole idea. I mean, yeah. at the end, they were able to obviously originally like to draw interest, get some older players, older ex-NFL players to join the USFL back in the day. But really, like the, the long game in this is 
there are players that are, to your point, that are out there that are good football players, not good enough to play in the NFL, but that should make the USFL a fun uh, football um a football organization to watch. Yeah, these are most these are mostly very young players that are just haven't quite caught on in the NFL and they might they might be able to use this as a springboard to get into the NFL eventually or not, but it's it's another opportunity at least. That's very different than the original business model of the USFL 40 years ago as they were making headlines by drafting Heisman Trophy winners right out of college. Uh, and you know eventually Hall of Fame players like Reggie White and huge names like that. And I started to get, you know, I knew that was never going to be the case with this USFL. They weren't going to be, they weren't going to be stealing players away from the, the NFL, but no, there, were plenty of, <laughs> there were plenty of reports out there that there'd be four to five recognizable names on every team. And which means, you know, there'd be 25 to 30, 30 players. You would, they not necessarily household names, but people that follow football, Really closely would know who they are for whatever reason, and I can't pick out five names that I that I would say are recognizable. I you know I knew who Shane Patterson, Shay Patterson was, but uh, the uh, the only other name that I recognize happens to be the backup quarterback for the Panthers, drafted in the twelfth round, the final quarterback drafted, Paxton Lynch, a former number one pick of the Denver Broncos who kicked around the league for a few years and never found a place. But I almost think our backup quarterback might be our starter by the, by the time this gets start, gets rolling on April 16th, the season. Uh, according to Pro Football Network, you guys are the eighth best drafter. <laughs> That's not good because there's only eight teams. Yes. Uh, number one was... The um, Tampa Bay Bandits. Cause... Yeah, I, I'd like to avoid analyzing this mainly because you and I have not heard of ninety five uh, players. I don't know. They, 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 you you I, found one I, website that happened to, I, to I, that happened to put the Maulers at three. Yes, I found that <laughs> website. So I honestly have not. I've been pretty busy today. Uh, I, I have also not found a website at... that put the Maulers uniform at number one. So <laughs> Athlon Sports. So there you go. I think breaking down these rosters would be fun for you and I to do uh, maybe in the next episode of the, the Michigan Panther cast. You can All break right. down your, your models. We can we figure can talk out who these people are, yes. Well, I think we're going to have to do some research. I, I oh, need to do that on, on I don't taking... like too much homework. <laughs> we'll, we'll get to that. <laughs> we'll get to that on the nap- next episode, whenever that happens to be. But uh, I think I guess my overall thoughts on the draft is I was a little disappointed. Maybe I, I got ahead of myself hearing that, you know, there'd be – many recognizable names you know certainly yeah i agree with you like i was waiting to see some headline flash across that i don't know just some like a a few at x nflers or yeah maybe even someone who wasn't quite you know making the grade who was a younger uh, younger guy who is a backup or something decided to hop ship or something but well, we were making the joke that you know Terrell Owens could come out of retirement well, no and- that's true i mean there this guy's been for for people who have been trying to get back to the NFL when you when you read stories like that on wide receivers and stuff like that you would have thought that it was a uh, no brainer but i guess not I, well, but at also the same been, time, I, I like the direction they went. To be honest, well, it is it is a specific direction because I, I believe most almost all the players are under age twenty six, so it is a very young league yeah. by design. I like that. Um, but beyond the the names that we didn't see or recognizable names, there were the the most remarkable thing about day two of the draft today, rounds thirteen through thirty five. <laughs> yes, were two two names that were drafted to the Michigan Panthers. Believe it or not. Uh, number one in the 31st round, uh, outside linebacker from Jacksonville State, Trey Threat. Was Whoa. By the Panthers. Now, that was a really the triple threat. I mean, that's literally his name almost. Uh, I thought that was a great name. And then uh, the Panthers also drafted in the 34th round, tight end from Memphis, Joe Magnifico. <laughs> so, He's going to be great. Yeah, he's got to be great. He's, he's magnificent. magnificent. <laughs> I thought those are those are fantastic names. I can't. I, I wonder if those are even real. Maybe those are stage names or something. But he hate me. 
We'll find out. But I think you and I, like I said, we should do a deeper roster breakdown. Ooh. Maybe we can focus on both your Michigan or I keep saying this wrong. Your your Pittsburgh Maulers roster, and I'll look at my Michigan Panthers. And we'll, Best we'll, uniform. We'll debate back and forth. I, I literally hadn't heard of any of your players. I haven't, again, I haven't gone on a deep dive. Well, but apparently I, they're the third best. Well, <laughs> according to what website was that? Pro Football Network. Yeah. Never heard of it, but that's... No, we'll see our rankings on Limp Ditka's network. Limp Ditka! <laughs> it, be, it might be equally as, as valid, but... Uh, like I mentioned earlier, uh, social media exploded. Uh, the Panthers, I think, gained about 5,000 followers over the last few days. This, this media blitz uh, over the less than the last week uh, since our last podcast last Wednesday night has been incredible. It's uh, moved the Michigan Panther cast over the 700 follower mark on Twitter, which Whoa. is, we just crested 600, uh, I believe, after last episode, less than a week yeah. ago. So. I think we're at 720 at this point tonight. So it is incredible. Uh, I what is what's the phrase? A rising tide raises all ships. So somehow our sure our Q rating is going up along with the Panthers and the USFL in general. So I appreciate all the support out there. I'm trying to trying to get some uh, fresh graphic content out there as much as I can, as I'm a graphic designer by trade. I'm not sure I have the analysis abilities of many other USFL podcasts out there which I appreciate much, uh, much like the guys over at the USFL podcast. And this is the USFL podcast. Those guys do a much uh, fantastic job analyzing things. Um, my contribution to this is, or our contribution to this is, is at least our opinions on this. Uh, I, I, I can't, folks, I contribute like 10% on this. But <laughs> and I, can, I can throw in my Once graphic, the season starts, though, it'll be different. But. Our graphic design skills come in handy on social media, so I'll, I'll keep trying to throw out wallpapers on Wallpaper Wednesday, as I've done today. So We're up to close to 100 followers on Instagram, Whoa. which just came out of nowhere. I've, I've posted a few things on Instagram, but we were getting lots of followers there, so I appreciate that, too. So. I'd say in a couple of weeks, we will be over the 1000 mark between all social media followers. So I appreciate that immensely. Um, so with that, um, you can find the Michigan Panther cast at USFL Panther cast on both Instagram and Twitter. Uh, we've got a YouTube channel on our Limp Ditka's YouTube page. You can find that by searching Limp Ditka's. It's not too hard to find. Limp Ditka's. And, and you can search uh, Michigan Panther cast as well, and you'll, that'll pop up. Uh, and you can find uh, some M Michigan Panther merchandise. Actually, Michigan Panther cast merchandise. Can't get away with a copyright infringement. But that's all found at LimpDitka's.com. So check it out. Buy some shit. We're actually selling some stuff there, too. So appreciate that. So I think with that, we can wrap this episode number nine up and we will be back to you maybe as soon as next week. There are rumors that the schedule may be released. Because it, that was one thing I complained about. I was whining about last week. So maybe if I whine about it a little more, it'll get Jeez. an announcement. Well, let's just, hope, let's just hope we know. Let's hope the first game is Panthers versus Maulers. So oh, just kick yes. this off correctly. That would be fantastic. The so. number eight drafted team versus the number three <laughs> drafted team. We'll get to I'm going Maulers, everybody. Jesus, back off, man. <laughs> if you couldn't see that on the on the podcast, uh, Pete got his face very close to the camera, disturbingly so. But <laughs> it'll be fun. I, I appreciate you embracing this rivalry, whether it's sincere or not. You're, you're doing your part. So, But I think that's all we've got for this week. So uh, I think with that, I'm going to call it dagger time. We out. Peace. Peace. Two and seven, you'd be in a bad mood too. Whoa, he has trouble with the snap, and the ball is free. And oh, he hits the upright again. That's impossible. Get your mouth shut. Get your mouth shut. Jerk. The Bears' season's going to end on a double doink. If worms had machine guns, then birds wouldn't be scared of them.
the Limp Bizkit's podcast. Just a couple of Chicago pricks united by our hatred of the University of Michigan football and the Chicago Bears. Find us at limpditkas.com and anywhere you listen to podcasts.